Good morning, everybody. Uh, it is Sunday, near the end of April. I am trying an experiment today. I am going to insert a pre-made video here that I did a few days ago that I removed from a, uh, the rest of the video that I did that day because the video ended up being way too long. So for today, I'm going to try and experiment with the stuff that I show in that video. So I am going to insert that here. I went to the bookstore yesterday and I can't help but look at magazines. I've loved magazines my entire life. So anyway, I found this and it says two stunning stamp sets, mindful collection. And so the stamps were on the front and the back of the magazine, but I have opened it up and taken them out and I glance through the magazine, but I'm not doing paper crafting at the moment. have done it many years in the past and could possibly do it again sometime in the future. There's some ideas brewing in my head for a couple things I want to try. Um, and I jump from craft to craft. I'm sure a lot of you do that too. But I just wanted to share, now this was um, $26, I believe. It was... It says, um, I just move those so they don't distract you. It says, uh, US $25.99. And it's uh, $32.50 in Canada and $26.99 Australia. So there's what my label says on that. So yeah, there's, you can see some of the pictures of the examples of the cards that they've made. So of course there's dragonfly and butterflies. So <laughs> you know I had to get it. But anyway, I want to share the stamps with you. I have not opened these totally yet. Um, there it is. But I wanted to show you Something that I didn't even notice when I picked it out yesterday, but I just love these. And again, they're not going to be for paper crafting. <clears throat> Why are you not exiting your packaging? Come on. All right. Well, I'd like to keep it on the background because there is a white background. But there's a few word stamps, and, and I've always loved word stamps as well. Be your own kind of beautiful is on there. I didn't even notice that yesterday. And look, I bought this sign years ago from Cracker Barrel. And they're my colors, of course, the teal and the purple. And I bought this because it really struck a chord with me back, I don't know, five, six years ago. So I didn't even notice that in there yesterday. And I'm, I was tickled pink when I looked at it today. But there's a really cute, um, I'm going to bring you down a little bit because I moved you out so I could show you the whole magazine at once. But I can't really tell what I'm showing you in the camera. And let me get better light, of course, but then there's going to be some shine because it's plastic. Okay. So there's this really cute ladybug, which I think is just adorable. And look what it's got on it. It's got hearts. And then there's this really nice leaf design. Beautiful hummingbird design. These are all the stamps. A simple flower, which I can use um, with all our love. Another leaf design, little tiny flower, more little tiny flowers, more leaves. This is a bee. Now, you see how there's flowers on this side of it? Like, this side is like normal wing and legs and stuff and some stripes. And then the flowers start as part of, and leaves as part of the decorations. I hope you see where I'm going with this. Birthday wishes, um, a moth. Really cool. Um, and this is, I'm not sure what that is. I think that's supposed to be a bee but I'm not 100% sure. 
um, another butterfly, another butterfly. This one I'm not as thrilled about, but that's okay. Uh, that could be a moth too. Um, another flower and leaf set and another butterfly and another flower there. And then the second one, this is, this package is the one that was in the front. That package I just showed you was the one that was in the back. So this is the one that was in the front and caught my eye at first. Spread your wings and fly. Um, another simple flower, thinking of you. I mean, there's some sentiments in here I might use and might not. Uh, let your dreams be your wings. I love that too. And then making each day your masterpiece. That strikes a chord with me too. I love you. And then this is a really pretty set of leaves and flowers here. I like the curvature of that. Another moth that's pretty intricate. Um, and then another butterfly but look at this one. It's like the bee with the flowers on one side and the normal butterfly-ish type thing on the other. Beautiful dragonfly. Um, a big flower, a rose type flower, some leaves, a hummingbird, and flowers. Spread your wings and fly, which I also like. And this bee is really decorative too. So let me back it out. <laughs> Probably, I was looking at these instead of looking at the camera, so... I back it out and not blind you. So aren't they pretty? I'm going to use these and embroider on them. That's what I'm going to use them for. I think these are amazing. I have seen on Pinterest coloring pages with these on them. Um, this, this type of decoration where half of something is decorated with flowers and stuff and the other half is like normal. So, and they're big. They're big enough that they would be pretty simple to embroider on. I mean, this is my hand. My hand barely covers that butterfly up. So that's pretty big. So, I was pretty pleased with that find. Spent way too much money on it. But you know what? <sighs> it's just money. Can't take it with you. I am going to give it a shot and if it works out, then you'll see this video. And if it doesn't, then, then you won't. <laughs> um, okay, now that that insertion is done, that intro, I hope everybody's doing well. Um, and what I'm going to do today is the ladybug stamp. I'm going to stamp it on this heart and I'm going to try to embroider it. We shall see how it goes. And I just inked my finger, I think. And I'm not necessarily caring about whether I'm using a permanent ink. I don't have an ink pad that is um, removable by heat, heat erasable ink pad. I know there's a lady, Sherwood Forest, Sherwood Forest something on TikTok who uh, was, she's an embroidery artist and has a business. And I think I'll just do it straight. And she was able to find a refillable ink pad and liquid heat erasable ink. And I don't know if she would share her source with me or not because I would not go into business like she did doing what she does. I'm not good enough for that. She is self-taught. She's only been doing it a few years. And she's done an amazing job with her business. And has a lot of support from her husband. So, um, yeah, that's really nice. It's pretty faint. Um, hopefully. Well... What I'm going to do, I think, at this point, is use one of the friction pens, if I can find the right one. <laughs> oh, I'm looking. Okay. I don't want the blue one. I want a black one. There we go. But I keep pulling the blue one out. And I still try and turn the stupid pen on that way, right? 
Now, there's a lot of shadow here, and I apologize. It's an extremely dark, rainy day once again. And... I may not be able to fill all of this in exactly the way the design on the stamp goes. I'm going to have to wait and see. Oops. Try not to go outside the lines, Martha. Okay, I think mostly. That's all I couldn't see. Hopefully the rest of it I'll be able to see along the way, but these are kind of faint as well. So I'm going to be turning this video on and off as I work, oh shoot. Okay. This fabric is bumpy, it's very rough. The piece I'm using. So this pen does not want to really cooperate. All right. So I'm going to do the hearts in red. I think I'm going to do these other spaces in black. Although these might be black, this might be red. I haven't thought this out very well, can you tell? Hmm. I think I'm going to outline in black. Maybe I'll try that first. I'm not really sure where this is going, so I hope you'll bear with me and stick with me, and we'll see. And if you think this might work for you, then let's give it a try together, and you can always find one of your stamps that maybe you're not using right now, that's rather large that you could fill in yourself. It doesn't have to have this kind of design on it, but you know, you could take any stamp and put your own design inside of the outline of it. I'll be right back. Okay, I am back trying to adjust the camera as usual. All right, um, so I did the outline. I did most of the outline. I don't know if you can see very fine bits like here and down here. I'm not going to do those. That just encloses the space way too much. I'm also thinking that I shouldn't have done the inside hearts. I would have just done the outside. It's okay. I'm going to figure it out. Um, this is all an experiment for me. So I did most of the outline in the black. Some of this is still going to end up being black. Some of it's going to be red. Now, my hardest decision <coughs> one of them at this point is do I go two strands or four for stitching in the ins, you know, the, the color. I think I'm going to go with four, but I'm going to need a different needle. That needle was good for outlining, um, but it's not going to be the right needle for doing the I guess I'll try this one. My fallback favorite needle. The eye has to be big enough to thread first off with four threads. And so I'm sorry if I sound a little weird today. I am very, I, I'm having a, a bunch of sneezing going on. And my second hardest decision is which parts do I do in red and which parts do I do in black? <laughs> so, I, I don't know why I struggle with stuff like this. Um, let me know if you do as well. So I think... I think I'm going to do all of like the background, the main wing background in red. That would mean that'd be black, that'd be red. I don't know. I'm just going to go with it and see how it turns out. I'm going to hope that um, I can get this done without it taking forever, but I will probably turn the camera off um, and um, 
do a lot of this work off camera because it's going to be a long stitch um, time. It's going to take me a while. And since I haven't done anything different between yesterday when I was yammering a lot um, and today, I don't have a thing, not a single thing to talk about. <laughs> Honest to goodness. Except the weather. The weather stinks. I almost said another word. Um, which is really how I, I feel about it. It really sucks. But anyway, um, it's rainy. It's dark. So I apologize for the lighting and the shadows. I don't have any natural light coming in at all but there's nobody mowing or weed whacking <laughs> so, so there's that see I'm not loving this because I don't like the stitches going straight up and down but I don't know what else to do with it oh shoot and that one covered up the black I don't know the more I'm doing this the more I'm thinking this might not be a video <laughs> this is interesting but it it's not easy it's um taking a lot of focus and the weird thing is that last night i went to bed at 11 o'clock i laid down see i don't know if i like that or not i don't know how else to do it Um, maybe, sh uh, I don't know, I'm going to go with it. Anyway, um, I was going to say maybe shorter stitches, but <laughs> I mean, they are going to be short in between here. I don't know what else to do. If you have any ideas, let me know how you would fill in this stuff. Um, so anyway, I laid down. And within about two minutes of laying down, I sneezed a couple of times and I went to sleep. And then I woke up about 2.30, went and used the restroom. I woke up at 6.30 because it thundered really loudly and poured rain. There was a hair hanging off the lamp and it was driving me nuts. <sighs> so I was worried about the plants on the deck because they have not been holding up well because it poured rain the day before yesterday as well. And Brand new plants that we spent a good chunk of money on. And I am not happy are being beaten to death by the rain. So. They are pretty beaten down, let me tell you. And where am I going with that? Well, that didn't go the way I wanted it to, but okay. I can always fill that in later. I'm sorry, I have to bring this really close to my eyes because my eyes are not focusing because after waking up at 6.30, I went back to sleep. I slept until 8.10. I mean, I don't know what's wrong with me. Some nights I can't sleep at all. Other nights I am like dead to the world for hours and hours and hours. It's just crazy. Anywho... That being said, it's 
See, now I could have done the background and then done the outline, but I don't think that would have worked for me because then I'm not sure I would have been able to see the outline clearly enough to do it, if that makes sense. Anyhow, so when I wake, woke up at 8.10, um, like within about 10 minutes, I was sneezing my brains out again. And then when I was making lunch at 12.30, I sneezed my brains out again. So, which is followed by blowing my nose profusely. And then, and all day I've, since I woke up, I felt like I want to go back to bed and go back to sleep. I don't think I have a cold. I think it's just... I know I'm coming really close, but I have to get close to my eyes and the camera's like at my forehead. So it seems really crazy, but that's it, folks. So my eyes are all watery and blurry, which is making this a little bit of a challenge, <laughs> I might say. So there's that. I am going to make some bread dough this evening and then I'm going to let it sit until tomorrow morning and then bake it. I haven't done it that way before. Usually I make it and I um, bake it within a couple of hours. But I could do that too. I don't know. We'll see. Oops. Hello. Why are you doing that? So, yes, I am very, um, like, I don't know. I don't know if it's allergies. I don't know if it's, I've had other days like this. Like, I got up one day a couple weeks ago. I had an earache, and I just didn't feel good. I was tired. And then the next day I got up, I was fine. None of that stuff was bothering me anymore. I don't know. Go figure. Beep, beep. The bread recipe I make is a no need K-N-E-A-D dough. Very easy. Four ingredients. You can let it rise anywhere from an hour to 18 hours. Pretty much comes out the same. Although I am using a partial part of the bread. Sorry. Part of the flour I'm using is called einkorn flour and it's not supposed to have like the stuff in it that regular flour has that can cause people to feel that they are allergic gluten intolerant whatever um, and I was reading on Pinterest yesterday Strangely enough, it popped up on its own. About einkorn flour. And um, it says that you don't use as much of it. Shoot. You don't use as much um, as you do regular flour when you're making items with it, like I think you use three quarters of a cup instead of a cup. So anywhere it calls for a cup of regular all-purpose flour, you only use three quarters of a cup. Something about the water absorption and stuff like that, which I found interesting. Um, so...
I did use that in my last pizza dough and it came out really well. I used part of it and then the other part I just used organic unbleached whole um, organic unbleached flour which for over a year now I've been staying away from white flour foods but I've caved and I figure as long as I am making it myself out of the most wholesome ingredients I can and I also buy Italian flour when I can find it because you're supposed to supposedly because of the way it's grown <gasps> sunshine the sun is shining I can't believe it sorry I live for sunshine it does not have to be hot but I do live for sunshine Warmth is nice. Hot, I don't do well. But I am glad I chose four strands. I don't have very much of this red though, so I hope I have enough to finish this whole <laughs> this whole ladybug. Let's hope right so it'll look pretty weird if I don't if I have to change red in between okay oh my eyes are so blurry This would be a much easier project done in a hoop, I think. And um, maybe not, as I said at the beginning of this section of the video, maybe not as many sections. Um, I can see where some of the more intricate designs, like the one with the butterfly, is going to be a lot more work and maybe more easily done in a hoop on a lighter fabric I don't know and I hope I do use these for future projects because honestly um, I spent a lot of money on the stamps <laughs> So I do like the idea of doing it this way, but I also know that simplifying it is okay too. You have to be okay with change, flexibility in your projects. So I think I know when I'm done with this, and I know you guys will be more glad that I'm done with this than I will be. Because this has to be quite boring for everybody but um, I think I'm going to do a I'm going to try a Japanese rice bag and I think I've decided that I'm going to take that class at artistic artifacts the dyeing class because she's going to be doing indigo an indigo bat we can bring whatever fabric we want and dye it I, I might just bring so much fabric she tells me I can't do it all <laughs> I'm just gonna buy myself you know a big wad of white cotton and uh I don't think I can afford a, a whole bolt, but that wouldn't be a bad idea. Then I can dye all the fabric I want. And once she teaches us, you know, pretty much how she does it, I, uh, I 
I think that um, it's something that I may do quite a bit of in the future because I just love the colored fabrics. I mean, look at this piece here. They did that. That store. Oh, I guess it's time to um, <laughs> knock this off. <laughs> I'm going to, I'm not even going to re re uh, thread the needle. I'm going to separate the threads in the back and just tie a knot, a double knot, surgeon's knot. There we go. And one more. But um, yeah, when they do those dye days, they take bundles of the fabrics that they find and they dye them during these dye days. And um, then they sell the bundles for $30 each, $29, $29.99. And, you know, if I can take ribbon and sari silk and uh, cotton and cheesecloth and stuff like that and do my own, it's worth the money. And I'll come home with a nice <clears throat> variety of dyed fabrics that I can use in my projects. And then I was watching, while I was doing this outline, I was watching uh, To Be Loved Treasures by Corinne. Love, love watching her. Um, I think that's what it's called. I think that's what her channel is called. I'm terrible at these things. My memory is <laughs> lacking. We'll just put it that way. And um, she's working on a Japanese rice bag. Now, hers is square. I want to find a pattern for a round one. I think Ariane Zercher has a pattern for a rice bag as well. And I'm going to do some research and try to, I'm going to try and fix my light a little more. The sun is trying, but it's not really coming out. And I have my black shears closed, so it's not helping me at all in this endeavor here. But anyway, um, I don't know if Ariane Zercher did hers as a class that you had to pay for. Or if there's a, if she's got a video or two online, I don't know. I have to research that. Somebody that had done a rice bag that I saw on Facebook said that she did it um, from, sorry, um, from a, uh, from Ariane. So, yeah. I will do some research. Corinne gives some great links for who she watched to get the ideas from. But if I can indigo dye some of my own fabric, that would give me a great start to the um, outside fabric of a Japanese rice bag. And I can stitch that myself. And so I, I think I'm getting more and more excited about doing that. But I have to get on and sign up for the class before it's full. And it's not available <laughs> anymore. Um, she This shop owner does do other dye days. But it's during the hot weather. And I can't... It's in a warehouse because... Um, you know, that way they aren't messing up shop floors and stuff. And I cannot be in unair conditioned spaces during July and August. So, um, I would, I think this class in May is going to be perfect. So, I'm going to tell Tony I want to sign up for that. It's on a Friday. We'd like to get a uh, camp spot, but I have a feeling 
that might be kind of hard to do. Um, Friday camp spots are usually impossible to get this time of year. Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And since I won't take uh, any of the classes on Saturday or Sunday, I was going to. There's an um, uh, instructor. Her name is Gwen LaFleur. And she is going to teach a class on making spirit dolls. But her class list of what you have to bring, and that class I believe is on Saturday, um, was huge. Like, huge. I'd have to bring all kinds of stuff with me. And although I have most of the stuff, um, I decided that's not really where I want to put my money. So, I'm not going to do that this time around. And that's okay. I'm good with that. And so... I am... The more I think about it, the more I want to do this dying class... I've been enjoying dyeing stuff. Oh, here comes some more sun. I think it makes a big difference in my lighting. I've been enjoying dyeing wool. I mean, I when I first started getting into spinning wool and stuff, I found dyeing the wool was very much fun. And then the moving away from wool, because I don't wear wool, <laughs> And I don't crochet with the wool. And I wasn't weaving with wool. I was weaving with cotton because that's what I can wear. So I just couldn't see staying with the wool anymore. But, so I moved away from that. Sorry, concentration. <laughs> oh, I need concentration. I'm going to go up this way. Um, what I'm going to do, I think, come on, I want you to go just above there. I'm going to come down this way. Oops, that was slanted a little more than I wanted it to be, but okay. I can fix it, I think. Ay, ay, ay. Sorry, I'm concentrating really hard here. <laughs> um, yeah, so then I started the ice dyeing a couple years ago. I mean, I did some tea dyeing of paper and stuff when I was, and fabric, when I was doing the journals. But fabric, I don't know, fabric has always been my first love. So, I think the rest of my life, however long that may be, I think will be probably mostly fabric uh, concentrated. And I have done some dyed pieces that I really liked. So... If I can expand on my knowledge of dyeing fabric, I think that's where I want to go with it. Come on. Because you can dye your own cotton embroidery thread. You just buy white and dye it yourself any color you want. So that's an added bonus. And I'm not unhappy with this. I think I'm okay with it. Get under the light of 
a little better. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice went out there. I'm just saying I'm just getting under the light a little better. There, I'm gonna fill in this little spot. Not bad, I'm happy. It came out better than I thought it was going to when I started. So, I'm going to turn the camera off again Otherwise, this video will be four hours long, which is why I didn't uh, film me doing the outlines. And because I did a load of wash and dried it, I um, made lunch and ate it. And I had to get up and blow my nose a couple times from sneezing and drink some water. And I have tea steeping right now. So other things have happened in between this. So I am going to turn the camera off once again and do the rest of this and then I'll be back. So I'll see you in just, you know, as Susie Q makes says, in a tick. Okie dokie, I am back. I've done a bit of work, <clears throat> sorry. And this has taken me all day. <laughs> uh, I have done other things in between, so there is that. But uh, it is 5.30. Um, previously I said I'd had lunch. Now I've had dinner. <laughs> yeah, we eat early around here. So, um, I just need to get this finished so that my project for today is done. And I don't know how long the other two pieces of video are that I'm going to attach to this ending one. So I apologize if it has gone long again. I did a couple other kind of fun things in between, too. Um, but meanwhile, I've been stitching, you know, in between all the other things that needed to be done. I apologize for noise. Tony is cleaning the kitchen. I ran in here. I only dirtied one, one dish, one little bowl, and a spoon, so it won't kill him to do dishes. He does them a lot. So, I wanted to start here because, as you can see, this is what it looked like when I followed the pattern of the stamp, and I decided to do the entire heart because it was doing my brain in, trying to figure out if I would do this black and this red, because then I thought, well, it's going to blend into that, and it won't really look like a heart, and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, I'm, my brain is a very um, complicated place to be. I am trying really hard to get the light right, so I apologize. Like I said, it's 5.30. It started raining again about 45 minutes ago, so it's very dark and dreary. <laughs> it was a dark and dreary night. So all I'm doing is these, oopsies, these long, straight, stitches and I'm trying to stay within the outline that I did I think the next time and there will be a next time maybe not on camera that I do this pattern I probably wouldn't spend the time outlining it um, I would probably just either start with the hearts or start with the outside red part or whatever color I would do. I might do purple and pink next time. I don't know. I really like the contrast of the red and black. Um, I I like contrast in things. But, um, so, yeah, that's a decision that I think I would make the next time is to not especially um, do the outline. So if you try using a large stamp like this, I mean you have to admit that's a pretty large stamp. It's as long as my as long as my thumb. Oopsies, don't pull that out. Pull that. Thank you. And so yeah, um it's not a fast process. This this is a fact. However, and that is 
pulling that down. So I'm not happy about that. If there are, like, there's little bits of white of the fabric showing through here. Oh, that's actually not. There's just a piece of the lint from the fabric. Like that little bit, I'll probably go back with some red and fill that in. But um, I am trying to cover it all. Like I'll have to go around this bit here. Again, because obviously I sort of didn't do very well with that side. And I may speed this up because this is going to take me a while because I still have this to do and this to do. And usually Tony and I sit and watch TV, but because I've been doing this and a bunch of other stuff today, like laundry lunch, dinner. <laughs> uh, my laundry is all sitting on my bed needs to be put away. So I'm going to have to do that before bed. And yeah, it's been a <clears throat> busy day and I've been struggling with like, I don't know if this is allergies or sinuses or uh, it's not a cold. I don't feel like I have a cold, so that's the good news. So, more good news. I, While I was doing some of the stitching, I was watching, like I mentioned in the previous section before I turned the camera off again, um, To Be Loved Treasures by Corinne, and she's working on a borrow bag. Uh, no, a Japanese rice bag. Sorry, called it the wrong name. And her use of the fabrics and her stitching in the part two of that. I'm excited to see part three when it comes out. And four, if there is one. But um, has really inspired me. I know. I know that I want to do a similar project um, when I am done with the 100-day project, which is June 1st, will be the last one. And so um, I am ready and excited to get moving on whatever's next. And I think I will make a Japanese rice bag next. And Corinne is making hers with, um, not with, to uh, use as a storage container in her craft room. But I'd like to use mine as a project bag. Um, I do want to see if there is such a thing as a round one. Hers has a square bottom and square sides. So I'm going to research that. But, all that being said, she has inspired me. So, I do not have Japanese fabrics. And I don't know that I have the money to invest in actually getting any. And I know I can just use, you know, the cotton that I have around here. I have yardage and I have... Um, you know, pillowcases. I, I have things I can use. Old sheets. I have things I can use. However, the deep, dark blue of the... This is definitely not lined up well. <laughs> I definitely did not stitch this, this side as well as I did the other side. Um, so, the... That dark blue with the white stitching and the indigo dyed fabrics are really calling to me. I, I've had opportunities in the past to do indigo dyeing when I belonged to a spinning and weaving guild. But I never 
did any with them. Um, okay, I'm happy enough with that. Now, let's see, I think I'll do this side next. Um, it's easier to start here. Where to start, where to start? I'm shuffling my needle back and forth, back and forth. So, the class, the dye day at um, Artistic Artifacts on May 12th, that's where you'll find me because I have, I asked Tony to check to see if there was any, if there were any camp spots available at the uh, regional park up that way that we went to, what was it now, a month ago or so? And um, when we went and visited Artistic Artifacts and the other thread store and um, the Army Museum. So um, he found one spot, one level spot left. They have a bunch of empty spots, but they are on the outside perimeter of the ring of the RV spots and they are not um, I think they have electric but they don't have water or sewer we don't need sewer we like to have water in case we run out so there was one spot left and so he booked it so we will we are going to be it's it's going to be hard. It's going to be hard to do this project and do the other things that we have going on. But as I mentioned in my previous video, we are going to be away. I'm just going to stick a little stitch right in there. Cover up that white. There. Um, we are going to be away... Uh, next week for three days and then we come back for one night and then we will be gone for two days at least um, so it's it's going to be a busy week and it's going to be tricky me getting this project done and still doing what we are supposed to do while we're gone. So I'm going to have to do a lot of planning and pre uh, cutting of fabrics and I have enough hearts. I cut all the hearts, the rest of the hearts the other day. Um, Actually, I might need, I think I'm shy, maybe two or three hearts. So I have to cut out a few more hearts. Well, not really for the trip because, I mean, like I said, I've got until June 1st. But I don't want to miss any days, but I'm not going to be able to post every day. Because that is going to be a crazy week. And internet will be spotty. It'll be non-existent in the first place, and it'll be spotty in the second place. And I'm going to be tired because the whole camp out thing, um, it does tire me out. Heck, I get tired here at home just if we run somewhere different every day. So um, maybe the day that we come back, Tony might want to go out and see Blue, and that'll give me time to pull together the supplies the supplies that I need for the class and I can take a nap and then we'll go up on the 11th and I can um, he can drop me off the morning of the 12th come on and we will
um, he can go wherever he wants. He can go to Belvoir. He can go look in the Army Museum again if he wants to. Um, I don't know. I don't know what he'll do. He can wait out in the parking lot in the van because it's got TV and radio and bathroom and <laughs> refrigerator. He can make his lunch, whatever. So I think what we might do is um, get kava that day. There's another another restaurant called Chopped, C-H-O-P-T, Chopped. We haven't tried them before. And they have a similar uh, menu to Kava. So we might try them. And I'm going to need a lunch. And if he doesn't hang around, I'll make sure I bring a lunch bag. Um... Yeah, so I'm excited about it. I think I'm going to enjoy it. I hope that I can stand for the length of time I'm going to need to stand. I hope I can do some sitting while we're there because um, my legs will not, my knees and my feet, I, I won't be able to. What I do with, <laughs> I'm so confused. Huh. I thought I just... I'm sorry. I'm looking to see... Oh, that's interesting. I could have swore I just... <laughs> had a whole strand of this to use. And... I guess I did. But I'm using four strands, which is weird, because then you have two strands left over. But then I can put those two strands together and do four. So I guess that's what happened. I'm so busy yammering again. Come on. So I am excited. I will try to take pictures of what I'm doing. Um, probably more so to remind myself of the process while we're there. But I think I'm just going to have fun. I'm hoping. Okay. So those two go there. Um, yeah. I, I hope to learn a few things. But I hope to also come away with feeling like I've had a an experience with other people that, you know, are going to have fun with it like me. I hope. Most of her dye classes sell out. This one is a Friday. Um, so I'm not sure how many people will be able to sign up for it. Personally, I'm hoping it's not a huge class. Um, but I figure that'll be my birthday gift. Is... Uh, Tony asked, him, asked me, you know, what I wanted for my birthday. Actually, I found a walking stick that I really liked when we were at the um, garden center in Fairfax. And he said, you can get that for your birthday if you want. I'm like, oh, I kicked around that idea. I really liked it. It was very lightweight but it was a good walking stick. And sometimes, you know, when you're walking, like even here in the neighborhood, if a dog comes running out, we had one neighbor that used to have, I don't know where this dog is or if something happened to it or if they just keep it in the backyard now or what. But this dog was on um, one of those invisible fence things. <laughs> Gosh. And... um. It would come charging from the backyard to the front yard whenever anyone walked by. It was scary. I watched more people turn around and walk the other way. And we used to walk our dogs when, you know, we still had the dogs. Before they moved on to, uh, you know, the rest of the universe. Um still a sore subject for me and um he came out one to the owner came out one time 
and said, oh, he just wants to play. I'm like, you're scaring the shh word out of my dogs. My dogs are little dogs. They're not, you know, they, they love people, but they don't love other dogs, especially big dogs charging at them. And we aren't too fond of it either. And I kept walking. Like, don't cross me when it comes to that stuff. <sighs> so, now we don't see the dog out front anymore. I don't know if something happened to it, like I said, or they just keep it in the backyard. Maybe they had a bunch of complaints. I don't know. But I watched more people walk up that way, and then they they the dog would come charging out. And it didn't matter if they had animals with them or not. That dog would come charging out and scare the bejesus out of everybody. So it wasn't fair to the rest of the neighborhood. So I haven't seen that happen in a long time. So anyway, maybe the guy got the message. Who knows? And uh, so when you have, you know, oh, oops, like a walking stick with you. And I have two hiking poles, but the handles on them are very thick around, and my hands are not that big. So, I mean, they look big when I do that because the camera is so close. The camera is only probably 10 or 12 inches from my lap, so yeah. But um, this walking stick was very, very light. I think it was bamboo. And um, it wasn't that big around, so it fit my hand really well. I was very tempted to get it, but I didn't. So that just means that there was something else meant for me to spend the money on. Now, granted, this class is going to be way more expensive than that walking stick was, but... Nonetheless, so I'm glad you can still tell that these are hearts. I was a little worried with my stitching, whether that was going to be easy to tell or not. So yes, you can still tell. Ow! Just jab my finger again. See, now I'm having the same conundrum. I, I need to touch up this red in here, but I, I will do that at another point. Um... Do I do one of these red and one black? You know, do I do this black and then that would look like a whole heart there? I think that's what I'll do. And then do this one maybe red? I don't know. Do I do them both black? And then all of this I think I'll do in black. I don't know. All right, let's do that then. Let's do this. So I'm going to... I'm going to split this, these stitches in half because that's a long way to go. But yeah, so now I'm excited about that class and probably won't take the class in any of the classes in Maine. It's just so expensive. I just I just can't justify it um, to myself. It, and it has nothing to do with, like, Tony never says anything. You know, it's not like he's saying, well, it's too expensive or anything. But there's a lot more we could do with that money. And I've always been that way. He, you know, it's not like Tony told me I can't spend money or whatever. I, I've i always been extremely frugal and I have this mentality that everything's a trade-off. Either you get this or you get that. And so, and the other thing that I can do is uh, at Artistic Artifacts, I know they have some stencils that have to do with shishiko stitching which is the stitching that you do on the 
those types of things, Japanese inspired fabrics and so forth. So I'm going to uh, pick up some of the stencils while I'm there. And I think I'm going to have fun and that will set me up for success easing into the slow stitching of making a Japanese rice bag and actually doing the stitching on it and using some fabrics that I've dyed and decorated myself. Soup. And really all I have to take is, um, I have to take a pair of old clothes that I don't care about getting dye on. And I have to take, um, what else does it say? Just any fabrics that I want to dye. So I'll be prepping those in the next week. Because otherwise I won't have time to do them. So i got to remember to do that. Somebody remind me. <laughs> if, I, if I have not done, mentioned that I've been cleaning my fabrics uh, by Wednesday... Somebody remind me. And then um, the other thing is um, my needle book and thread. Because one of the processes will be um, stitching through the fabric. I think you stitch through it. I've seen the process before. I can't remember exactly what it is now. But you stitch through it and I don't know if you fold it and then it resists where you've stitched and where it's folded. I can't remember exactly. But it comes out really cool looking. So I'm excited about that. And... I'm familiar, semi-familiar with the process, so it'll be, it'll be good. It'll be a good thing. I think I'm going to... Go this way. I don't know. My skin has been itchy. My sinuses are messed up. My eyes are watering. <laughs> it's a mess. That worked out well. Okay, and then go up here. I know I'm keeping you a long time, and I really apologize. I think what I'm going to do is put it on time lapse now, and I'm going to uh, just finish this up. Okay, so I have this one last section to do, and then I'm calling it a day, because I am tired. <laughs> this has taken me forever. Of course, if I just sat down and did it and knew how I was going to do it, that would be a different story. I'm using all six strands this time. I'm not sure you'll be able to tell the difference, but we'll see. So, I hope that as boring as this probably was for you, that, um, you know, if you have something similar to this, like using a stamp or using some sort of image, that maybe you'll give it a shot and make it your own. 
by making whatever changes work for you. And it'll be one way that you could improve your stitching. I mean, basically, I'm not using a whole lot other than just a... I, this is more thread painting than anything else, but... It's also relaxing, unless you're trying to do it within a time frame and, you know, on camera, then not so much, maybe. But... I had a bit of a time getting my thread through because there's so much thread in the on the back of this thing now. Come on. And again, this might be easier in a hoop for you. So Nothing wrong with that. I don't like the hoops that I have, but I guess they're kind of cheap. So at some point I might look for a better hoop. Don't know. Good enough, Martha. Good enough. Get it done. These poor people that are being tortured by trying to hang out until the end with you. So anyway, I hope you're working on something. I hope you're having a wonderful weekend. And um, I hope you have a good week ahead. And because I will be busy, I don't know how many videos I will be able to do this week. But the following week, don't expect to see me much at all. Um... I should say, don't expect to see me at all, because I, now that, you know, I'm thinking about it in my brain, I, I don't see how I could get a video done. So, um, it's going to be hard enough for me to prepare for this class and prepare to go camping for three days before the class and then come back and have to restock the van and stuff and get the class stuff piled in there and then try and get a good night's sleep and take off the next day and then the day that's not the day of the class the day of the class is the day after that so it's going to be quite an interesting Now, at some point, I'll, I might go back and put those lines in to distinguish because I seem to have covered up the black lines. Probably because I'm using six strands and it's very, very thick. Okay, well, that is that. Yay. I'm pretty happy with that. There's a couple touch-ups I'm going to do, but for the final project, this is it. And I will be attempting more of these made with the stamps. So I want to thank you very kindly Again, for joining me once again and sticking it out with me, if you did. <laughs> if you didn't, I don't blame you. But there is the, the little the little ladybug, ladybird, whatever you're used to calling it. I will fill in those spaces with red if I don't fall asleep in front of the television tonight. And um, this is day... Um, 69. Woohoo. 69. Okay, now I have to go edit.
and then download the edit to my phone and upload the video to YouTube. So it's going to be a late one tonight. I hope that you all have a really great weekend. I appreciate you being here as always. Love you. Hit the thumbs up. Hit the subscribe if you haven't already. I appreciate it. I appreciate any viewings of this that you do. Um, if nothing else, let it finish running in the background. You can turn me off, do whatever, turn off the sound. But if you let the video run all the way through, it helps me a lot. Um, the views will get me to the next step of trying to have a better YouTube channel. So take care, everybody. Have a great week. I will be back when I can be back. And I'll see you in the next one, whenever that is. Bye.